music training by Salvador. Yeah. 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 That's where I got to from Salvador Fusco, yeah. who's a professor at Berkeley College of Music. Yeah. Yeah. He did a class for the song leaders and those who inspire to be better <laughs> song leaders, yeah. or yeah. song leaders themselves, like myself. I got the privilege of being there. <laughs> and uh, it was just phenomenal. He taught us things about music and how to hit. I mean, we even did ear training. Yeah. yeah. Stuff I didn't even know about. So I mean, it was so awesome. And so I wanted to lift up Salvador Fusco for this awesome. Well, as you guys might know, it's our, our last Sunday service here at Benjamin oh, Franklin. Yeah. 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 And I know many of us are sad because this class <laughs> has become so dear to oh, us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we're excited. Yeah. 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 Look on over at Genesis chapter 12. Alright. In Genesis chapter 12, we're going to pick up with the father of faith, with Abraham. Of course, Abraham was traveling with his own dad and his brothers, and they traveled all the way from her, all the way to Haran. And as they got there, they got to settle on down and live comfortably. And they were living their lives, and that's when the Word of God came into Abraham's life. And any time the Word of God comes into your life, you, you've got to get prepared and get ready to hear it. Right? So strap yourself on in as we look into the Word of God. And verse 1. The Lord said to Abraham, leave your country your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. Oh, wow. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham left, as the Lord had told him. God comes to Abraham, and he says, Abraham, you need to pick up all your stuff, and you need to leave. You're not allowed to take any of your relatives with you. You got to leave your dad and your brothers and everybody behind. Well, and you got to go to where I show you. And guess what? You don't know where that is. You just got to go on a promise that I'm giving you. Wow. That when you go, when I send you, you're going to be blessed. Wow. Amen. I'm going to bless you so incredibly that everybody throughout the world will be blessed through you. And so Abram was sent with the promise. The title of our sermon today, Sent with the Promise. Amen. Called out of life of comfortability. <laughs> I'm comfortable where I'm at, Lord. I got all my family here. I don't know where I'm going. I've never been to this place you're calling me to. Why would I go? Because of a promise that God gave me. Sent on a promise. Look at Exodus chapter 3. It'll be the next book over. In Exodus chapter 3, we find the story of Moses. And Moses was raised as a, a son to Pharaoh. And was raised in Egypt and learning all the ways to be a Pharaoh himself. Under the daughter of Pharaoh, she raised him as her son. He was there for 40 years and 40 years of training. Well, then he decided to leave and become a shepherd. For 40 years, he was a shepherd. And as he's learning how to be a shepherd, taking care of a flock, he's noticed as he's walking one day, this bush that was on fire. And as he's walking around, he's going, whoa, look at that bush. It's on fire, but it doesn't burn up. And like any of us, we go to check it out. Right. So Moses goes on over and he looks at this bush and he hears the voice of God. Sometimes God does something pretty incredible to get your attention. Yeah. Yeah. He comes over and this is what... The Lord says in verse 7, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now, the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I've seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. Isn't that so encouraging? Yeah. That God knows exactly what you're going through. Mm -hmm. right. You ever feel just, just suppressed and oppressed and just depressed? You know what I mean? <laughs> suppressed, oppressed, and depressed. <laughs> and you're just, you're just struggling. You're going through the hardest times of your life, and you're just crying out to God, God, please do something in my life. Please work. I need you to come on God. And God says, look, I've 
heard their cries. I've seen their misery. I've seen where they're at, and I'm concerned. I want to come and save them. I want to bring them out of their suffering. I want them to be able to live by the Spirit. I don't want them to be enslaved any longer. And so I am going to save them. Yeah. Isn't that awesome that when God looks at your life and he sees you going through hard times, wow. his heart says, I want to come and save you. Yeah. Yeah. I want to come into your life and take you out of slavery come on. into another land that I can send you with a promise. Mm-hmm. Wow. Verse 10, the Lord says, so now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people and Israelites out of Egypt. So wow. Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. I love this. God says, I'm going to save my people. So Moses, you go and you bring them all out. You know how God saves you, how God works in your life? By bringing people into your life to give right. you the message of God. Amen. You might be wondering how you met that disciple. That it must have been a big coincidence that you were going through a hard time and you were crying out to God. And then a disciple comes in your life and says, hey, let's study the Bible. Mm-hmm. Let's look at the scriptures. It wasn't by coincidence. Acts 17, 26 to 28, God sets up the exact time and place where you are. So that you would be at just the perfect spot. So that a disciple would come into your life to help rescue you, to send you out of the land of slavery, to send you out of your suppression, your depression, to bring you into a promised land with a promise. That's right. I remember back in, in 2007 when my mom passed away due to breast cancer. And I remember being so crushed as the baby of the family and my mom was gone. And I couldn't understand. I remember thinking, who, who, who is God at this point? Because my mom was a Sunday school teacher. My dad was an usher in the church. We'd go every Sunday. And now she's gone due to breast cancer. I couldn't understand. And so I remember going up onto the roof of my house. We lived out on a farm in the country. And so it was this big three-story house. That, you know, I'm sitting up on the roof under the stars. And I remember just crying. God, I need you to show your son to me. Come on now. Help me make sense of this. If you're real, prove yourself. Yep. Well, I went off to college at Ohio State. And after the first quarter of getting involved in marijuana, smoking a pack of cigarettes a day, chewing tobacco every day, drinking every night, taking over-the-counter medicine, overdosing on on Robitussin or pain medicine, just trying to bury the pain, trying to escape from the depression that I had. I remember making a decision after the first quarter that I was just gonna run away. I just needed to get to a new land. I just needed to get out of it so I could think 